Para fazer a cobrança, o argentino teve o melhor aproveitamento nos treinos do Vasco. Emiliano Dudar, o Neto 91. A galera grita Dudar, Dudar. Bruno no meio do gol, já está autorizado. Vai Dudar para a cobrança, bateu Bruno! Bruno com os pés, ele caiu para o canto direito. A cobrança, Bruno no meio do gol, Diego bateu e Bruno On June 9, 2010, a woman by the name of Alicia Samudio went missing. In the months previous to her disappearance, she had filed court proceedings against the father of her son, Bruno Fernandes da Torres de Souza, a well-known goalkeeper for Brazilian football giants Flamengo, for non-payment of child support. Alisa had arrived in Rio de Janeiro on the 4th of June. It's believed she arrived in order to come to an arrangement with Bruno. They had originally met in May of 2009 at a barbecue and later partied together at the house of a fellow Flamengo player. It was at this party that Elisa would fall pregnant. According to Bruno, this happened during an orgy hosted by the aforementioned colleague. Initially, the two got on and frequently met. Bruno even planned on leaving his then wife to be with Elisa. However, when she told him that she was pregnant, he pushed her to consider an abortion, which she refused. On doing so, he told her that anything they had was over. Signs that Bruno was dangerous and willing to do anything to get what he wanted appeared during Elisa's pregnancy. On October 12, 2009, she reported to police that she had been falsely imprisoned by the goalkeeper and two of his friends. She told police they had beaten her, pointed a gun at her, and forced her to ingest tablets, which would bring on an abortion. The allegations were only followed up in July of 2010, when Elisa had already disappeared. From reports at the time, it appears as though a type of restraining order was placed on Bruno, where it was stipulated that he had to remain at a minimum distance of 300 meters. This was made known to the press and he was forced to release the following statement. It's not the first time she's made up this bunch of lies to try to harm me. The other time, she didn't prove anything, and she won't prove it again, because she made up this whole story. That's why I decided that I will only speak through my lawyer, who will take all reasonable measures to prevent her from continuing to try to harm me. She doesn't conform because I've already made it clear that I don't want any kind of relationship with her. I'm not giving this girl the 15 minutes of fame she craves. Absurdly, the protection of Elisa was rescinded by a judge because she was only in a quote, casual relationship with the goalkeeper, unquote. On February 10th, 2010, she gave birth in the city of Sao Paulo. Bruno refused to accept he was the father and Elisa later filed a lawsuit for recognition of paternity. It's believed, as she had every right to, that she pressed Bruno for financial support, as well as stating that the goalkeeper had got physical with her. The goalkeeper is said to have been enraged by Elisa's willingness to go to authorities and in the process damage his career and a possible move to Europe to play with the Italian team AC Milan. The most commonly reported version of events suggests that Elisa was taken forcefully from a hotel in Rio on the 9th of June 2010. She was then brought to Bruno's house in Esmeraldas, Minas Gerais. Bruno's 17-year-old cousin would tell investigators that Elisa was tortured, strangled to death by Marcos Aparecido dos Santos, quartered, and her remains were partially fed to Rottweiler dogs. Those pieces of her body that weren't were buried under concrete. Police had the dogs put down so that they could examine their stomach contents, but never found any of her remains. For this reason, the account of Bruno's 17-year-old cousin cannot be confirmed. Marcus Aparecido dos Santos, the man said to have strangled Elisa, 
was a former police officer. He was arrested on July 8, 2010. Bruno himself was charged with murder, kidnap, hiding a body, forming a criminal gang and corrupting minors. For obvious reasons, his contract with Flamengo was terminated. His defence team backed off due to the unpopularity of defending him. According to Bruno's best friend and one of his accomplices, Luis Henrique Ferreira, Elisa was promised a large cash payment. However, in order to get it, she would have to accompany Ferreira to Bruno's farmhouse. Ferreira was accompanied by Jorge Salas, Bruno's 17-year-old cousin, who had been under the goalkeeper's tutelage after getting into trouble with drug dealers in his poor neighbourhood. Jorge was the one who told the cops about Elisa's ordeal. She was driven to Bruno's Rio mansion after being beaten up. He was away playing for Flamengo, but he showed up the next evening. Bruno later testified in court that he and Elisa had a conversation and agreed to go to the ranch. Elisa was kept there until June 10th. She and the baby were taken to a house in another city, Belo Horizonte, that afternoon. She was then asphyxiated there by Marcus Aparecido. Her body was then dismembered and fed to the dogs. Bruno's cousin stated that she was buried on a small family farm close to the Confins airport in Belo Horizonte. Bruno's associates, including his ex-wife Diana, attempted to hide the baby from the police. Police officers discovered the baby in a slum in Ribeiro das Neves on the outskirts of Belo Horizonte. A number of years later, police would attempt to search the area said to hold the remains of Elisa. However, after what was described as an extensive search, they were unable to come across anything related to her. In July 2010, there was an order to detain Bruno. His accomplices Luis Henrique Ferreira, Marcos Aparecido dos Santos, Diana Rodriguez do Carmo Souza, Bruno's then wife, Fernanda Gomez de Castro, a former girlfriend of Bruno's, Ella Nielsen Vitor da Silva, and Wermerson Marquez de Souza. Their trial began on November 19, 2012, and was postponed until March 2013. When the verdict finally came down, Bruno was given a sentence of 22 years. His conspirators, Luis Henrique Ferreira, was given 15 years, and Marcos Aparecido dos Santos, like Bruno, was given 22 years. However, this isn't the end of the story. Apparently, prison terms mean next to nothing in Brazil. Bruno was now walking the streets, essentially a free man. He was first released on the 10th of March 2017. On the 14th, he had signed for the Brazilian club Boa Esporte. By the 25th of April of the same year, he was back in prison. As of now, he is out and about on what is called, and I quote, partial release, unquote. From what we can tell, there is a number of terms he has to agree to, but on the whole, he is living the life that Elisa has been robbed of. Thanks once again to everyone for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Mystery Scope. As always, until the next time. Do take care.